and welcome to this week's movie math, where you know what? Moving, moving going just hasn't worked out. We were, you know, a lot of people felt that they could will it to return. They were like, we don't need New York and Los Angeles. The rest of the country is going to step up and really deliver. But that has not happened because it looks like uh, movie going has settled into a new normal, which includes about three to four million dollar openings. That's so bad. But yes, the latest is Focus Features Come Play, aka Stranger Things Light, uh, which debuted, sure enough, with around three million. And so that means that's just how many people are willing to go to the movies at most in a weekend right now. That's incredible to think how many people are in this country and that's how few people want to go to the movies. Now, some of you might be like, well, Grace, they should release better movies. Well, they have. And so far, Tenet and New Mutants, two very different properties. So, you know, that was a pretty good test. They can, they can get more, but only up to about seven to 10 million per weekend. Uh, that's it. So that's not really, that doesn't really make it worth the studio's time to release big movies. Cause they're just, the money just isn't there. Speaking of Tenant, that film is approaching 350 million worldwide. It'll hit it this week. And a little birdie told me that means we should expect to get some information finally about when it will hit digital. Expect an announcement either this week or maybe the week after because the news cycle for the next week will surely be dominated by the U.S. election, which of course is on Tuesday. Hollywood should grind to a halt. And, uh, We'll see, we'll, see, we'll see what happens on Tuesday. But anyway, it's going to affect the, the Hollywood news cycle. And all news cycles, quite frankly, except for, of course, the political one. Now, as for when some more big movies might come along. When's this going to happen? Well, don't look for any beyond small indie distributors trying to, like, get some traction. Uh, you know, for instance, the Jackie Chan Vanguard movie is coming up uh, very soon. But the two studios still in play are Disney with their Fox films, their sacrificial lambs, uh, and then also Universal because, of course, they have that 17-day deal with, um, with AMC, the release window of 17 days. AMC is the biggest movie... Uh, the, you know, the biggest movie theater company in the United States. And Regal is second, but Regal is closed. So the fact that other movie theaters might not be willing to play the content because of the 17-day 17, 17 window doesn't really matter to, to Universal right now anyway. And Focus Features, by the way, of course, just released Come Play. So Universal's still in the marketplace, and uh, so is Disney, but again, just with the Fox with the Fox movies. Hilarious. And we'll see if Disney decides to pull those because we're going to talk about some stuff that ain't looking so good. Because, you know, the only other big movie still to come uh, outside of that group is uh, Warner Brothers uh, Wonder Woman. And I, as I've told you many times now, uh, I've heard that Warner Brothers feels they have till December 1st to decide. But they might make a decision a little bit earlier with these latest developments. Because over the past few days, Europe is, uh, by, you know, country by country, been shutting down their movie theaters yet again, thanks to a vicious second wave, which is just starting to hit here as well. Uh, right now, Europe has closed their movie theaters in many countries for about a month, but I think we can easily see Europe extending that through the end of the year, especially because, you know, the holidays, there's even more family gatherings that they're trying to discourage. So you don't want to give people another reason to go out or to potentially get sick and then go to a family gathering. So I think that there's a very good chance that that, that those businesses will remain closed through. It's going to be tough because, of course, the holidays are a big, are supposed to be a big retail period. So businesses, will, businesses and restaurants won't want to be closed during the holiday shopping season. Um, so we'll see what local governments decide. There will be quite a bit of pressure there. Uh, but movie theaters, I don't think that they're. I think movie theaters will probably be re remain closed regardless of what happens to stores and um, restaurants. And with European theaters closing back up, that gives New York City and Los Angeles, the two most European-like cities in the United States, both in terms of logistics, in terms of how they're structured and how people uh, interact and move about, but also politics, it gives New York and Los Angeles the backup they need to remain closed. Uh, it takes off a lot of pressure for them to, re to reopen by the end of the year, quite frankly. Uh, so I think that New York, New York City, due to what happened in Europe, I think New York City and Los Angeles will also remain closed through the end of the year. But on that note, I do not see any U.S. theaters that are currently open closing up again, not just for political reasons, but because they're not that crowded. Uh, and they're, because Europe, and New York, Europe, New York City, and Los Angeles are going to stay closed, I don't see any big movies opening up that will get more people to go to the movies and more theaters to open. So it's, we're, we're probably going to stay in this holding pattern through the end of the year.
as many of us suspected. But it's looking pretty official. The trades now are quick to point out the trades are being very aggressive to push people to open, like really aggressive, like super aggressive. They, I mean, it's crazy. I, I, it's, I think that the, I feel I can understand people's frustration, but I feel these aggressive tactics should be to the politicians to get some kind of relief package passed for movie theaters and the people who work on that side of the industry. Um, you know, that's the thing. You know, we were talking about uh, Disney. Um, I think that there should be some pressure for them to, you know, not not reinstate the full salaries of their of their top executives, because they're firing a lot of people, and that money could be used to keep those people on or give them some kind of relief. Because really, what Disney is doing, and what you could see other companies potentially doing, is pushing their people, their employees, off on the government and saying, "You pay for them with unemployment, and we're just going to hunker down uh, and, and significantly reduce our expenses." I think they should hit them with severe taxes to make up for that and saying, you know, you're pushing your employees on the, on the, on the state to, 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 to finance. And so we need more money from you to do that. Nice try. But movie theaters have a similar situation and their employees need to be looked after as well. Not the top executives. I'm talking about the people who work there, you know, the lower down employees who, who do not have the luxury of very large salaries. So, it's, you know, that, so the trades are very aggressive. And the trades have pointed out, which is true, that no cases of COVID have been traced to going to a movie theater. But I think that's because not that many people are going. So it's not really a legit example of what would happen if people returned to movie theaters in earnest. Also, let's be honest, I don't think contract tracing really, to the most part, is really working out. I don't think people know where people are catching it. I'll tell you where you're catching it from going outside and talking to people. Uh, there, you've, I've, I've, I've solved it for you. Now, one could argue that theme parks in Florida are a good test case uh, where there haven't been any cases traced to those either, and they certainly are more crowded than movie theaters right now. However, there's a lot of movement and outdoor activity in theme parks versus, again, spending two plus hours sitting still in a room with closed doors and maybe an updated ventilation system. As AMC has pointed out, they're only updating their ventilator ventilation systems to better filters where it's, you know, possible quote unquote, which means it might not be your theater. Uh, overall, also, you have to point out, of course, that Florida's COVID situation is not great either. I mean, talk about new normals. Florida has just decided to live and die with COVID. So, you know, that's fine. That's what that state's chosen to do, but that doesn't mean that's what every other state would decide to do. Now, remember, some studios decided to start releasing movies in the first place because they felt that the foreign market would pick up the slack. But only one region is hopping right now, and that's Asia, where, what do you know, they prefer their own movies instead of imported ones from Hollywood. Sometimes they like Hollywood fare, but, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of tension between the West and the East right now because, of course, where coronavirus started. And uh, I think some battle lines seem to be being drawn, even in entertainment. Although, of course, Jackie Chan's Vanguard is coming here soon. Uh, China is also a few months ahead of the rest of the world because they started this. And then as for Japan, they've done a very good job managing COVID. You know, the masks are something that people wear a lot in Asia all the time. So it, there's, you know, I think that's probably helped them a little bit as well. Uh, Japan also is an island. Uh, I'm not quite sure if that's the same situation as like, say, New Zealand or Australia. But Japan's doing great. I can see why movie going is doing so well there. They have about, uh, they have under a, a thousand new cases a day for the entire country. Whereas in, on Friday, the United States set a new global record for new cases with almost 100,000. Now, of course, the United States is much bigger than Japan, but still, the ratios are not good. So, streaming is the new pandemic frontier for Hollywood, and on Friday, Disney Plus released the first episode of The Mandalorian, Season 2. Now, Disney has run a very odd ad campaign for this, although I've told you why that is. And sure enough, well, I mean, they only had one trailer, but, you, you know, you can attribute that to secrets, right? They don't want to give anything away. Although, still, it's, it's ridiculously secretive. One trailer? Some of you said you'd forgot that it was even starting on Friday. But then also... I told you that there's a lot of stuff going on, and as you can see, they, I have never seen anything that is this big be released without a single interview that they didn't have total control over. 
That's incredible to me. That is just really amazing. I was waiting for the last minute to talk about it, but it's passed. You know, the show is debuted and they really only had two interviews, Variety and Good Morning America. Those are the only two outlets that really were allowed to cover it. And of course, Good Morning America is Disney owned. And I'm sure Variety made a very nice deal with Disney to give them some positive coverage. Not to say, you know, I told you they could, they could have totally made up. Although considering how secretive they're being, my guess would be that maybe they're not sure what they're going to do. And, you know, Pedro Pascal's just like, hey, let's play nice. I'd like everything to work out, but let's just see how the show does. Uh, they also had a virtual event Friday evening, which was run by Disney. Uh, really, no, no junket, no interviews, like no late night, inter like no late night appearances. That's just incredible. That's incredible. Very weird. And it just continues to back up what I reported to you. But they were masterful on how they handled Twitter. On Friday, they added a Baby Yoda effect to the like button. Now, like everything, this is not done just to amuse you. It's done to make money or to get publicity. And it's a brilliant feature that Twitter offers to customers. So if you, and I'm sure you have to pay for this. If you pay for this, that means that people get something that's fun to do, but it means they hit the like button more than they usually would because they just love seeing Baby Yoda appear. So what does that do? Well, it only appears, Baby Yoda only appears when you use the hashtag the Mandalorian. And so on Friday, everybody was using that hashtag because it would mean you would get a lot of likes because everybody was having fun hitting the button. So what did that do? That made the Mandalorian trend all day long. Absolutely brilliant and expect to see more and more places use this feature. And that's now you understand why it's so effective. It's just really incredible. But overall, interest in the show to me seems a bit below season one, just a bit below. It's not at the same level that it was. Uh, I mean, I think hardcore Star Wars fans are excited, but beyond the hardcore Star Wars fandom, it's not connecting as much as it did before. But that could be partially due to the pandemic. Um, it could also be because it's, you know, a weekly instead of a binge. And then also I think the non-existent ad campaign, I think, you know, and also just the nature of the show. It's like kind of watch it when you feel like it. I think that as the season continues and hopefully we'll get more surprises and reveals, interest should increase. Also, I have to remove Disney Plus from our weekly discussion as to what's trending. Because as one of you pointed out to me, the trending list is not consistent across accounts. I checked this out since my whole family is on the same Disney Plus account. I was able, and you can go into other people's accounts. I was able to go into different accounts. And while two of our accounts had the same trending, the third time, the third account I went into had a different trending list. So useless. So I can, same goes for the new HBO Max trending now feature. Unless they rank it with numbers like iTunes and Netflix do, I can't list it because I can't, I can't confer. I can't, you know, I, I, you know, it's not reliable. Instead, we'll have to use these stupid Nielsen ratings that are a month late. Damn it! But at least it's, you know, it's something that's verifiable. And you can see here that right after the Emmys a month ago, uh, where Schitt's Creek dominated, sure enough, it was number one on streaming. While The Boys continues to be the only fly in Netflix's victory suit. Will The Mandalorian be the next one? Although, although do we only have to have one non-Netflix show in the top ten at a time? Can we maybe get two in there? And once again, Netflix got another movie into the sea of shows because, you know, it's one movie versus multiple episodes. So it's very hard for movies to get into the top 10 on streaming. So it's impressive when one does. And Enola Holmes, as you can see, is still up there. Now, as for Netflix's top 10 right now, the entire top 10, the entire top 10 is Netflix originals. That's incredible. Four of which debuted just this past week. Emma Roberts, her undeniable star power, Holiday is a movie and it's number one. That's incredible. That's, that makes her like Adam Sandler. I mean, Emma Roberts, you know who else it makes her like? Joey King, who has become a huge breakout star thanks to The Kissing Booth. Can you believe it? The Kissing Booth too has made Joey King a hot ticket in Hollywood. She is blowing up. She's getting deal after deal after deal all off of The Kissing Booth too. That's incredible. Then also a French film, an Egyptian documentary, and a German show are all in the top 10. Hooray! It's a small world after all on Netflix. I think that's incredible. I love that people, thanks to streaming services, are opening up their horizons on what to watch because it's part of your subscription cost. It's free, basically. So you will try foreign fare if it's free in the United States because this is the United States top 10. Also, His House is a big win featuring two UK leads 
with Nigerian backgrounds. This is an exciting film. Uh, Derisu is first generation British, while um, uh, Musaku uh, uh, immigrated to the UK as a small child. Speaking of Musaku, this is a great one-two punch for her coming right after Lovecraft Country. Her agent should be delighted. Then on iTunes, newcomer The Craft Legacy was no match for Halloween classics, especially Halloween classics on sale. Uh, as for what's coming out this week, we have a new movie hitting theaters. And this one I think will do very well with the people who want to go to movies right now. Kevin Costner and Diane Lane will hit theaters on Friday. And this is another Focus Features release, which is also from Universal. And again, I'm hearing that Universal is activating their 17-day window deal here with AMC. So expect Let Him Go to hit theaters on Friday and then be available on digital just in time for Thanksgiving at the end of the month. That's a great play. I think that movie will do quite well. I think it will do as well as a movie can do in theaters right now, and it will do very well on streaming for Thanksgiving. That's very smart. And AMC, of course, will get part of that streaming money as part of the deal. Network TV is coming back to life this week. It continues. It'll, it's, you know, some shows started last week. A number of shows start this week, and then the rest will start by, the, uh, by next week. Uh, and streaming services, though, don't have a lot to offer in terms of new content this week, maybe because of the election. Next Friday, November 13th, is big. A lot of stuff next week. Uh, so this week, it's going to be a little bit of slim pickings, except for Netflix, which always has something to keep you from leaving their site. So on Wednesday, they have Swedish dramedy series, Love and Anarchy. I'm going to pay a little more attention to the foreign films and shows because you guys are watching them. Then on Thursday, Spanish true crime series Carmel, Who Killed Maria Marta, will debut. Considering how much everybody loves true crime and foreign, la foreign uh, pro projects, that could be big. Uh, Arabic series Paranormal and new holiday movie Operation Christmas Drop on Thursday for some reason. But then on Friday, there's a Nigerian film, Citation, which deals with sex abuse. And then Kofi Anderson has a new reality show on Netflix, and we'll see how that does. So what have you been watching, and what do you plan to watch? Plus, what do you think of the movie theater situation uh, with the latest developments? Share your thoughts down below. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.